I think there's a poppy seed stuck in my teeth and I couldn't get it out and um dang that was in there this whole time I'm so sorry hashtag real life Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm Orielle. Today I am so, so excited. I just got back from a trip home for Thanksgiving and what was on my doorstep but the Norvina Pro Pigment Number no. 5 palette. So this is something that I have wanted since it came out. I hemmed and hawed. I looked at reviews. It's been a long time coming. This is one of those things that was sitting on my wish list for a very, very long time. And before I actually committed to my death year, I actually purchased it on sale for probably half price. It was, I think, $30 when I picked it up. And it is an absolute beaut, an absolute gem, a beauty. I used this palette to do my full face today. I only did one look. It is this very, very dramatic cut crease situation. Um, but I think it came out really, really beautiful. And in fact, um, through the experience of trying out this palette, doing some swatches, really kind of putting it to the test, I realized that it is actually even more flexible than I had imagined. It's even better than I thought. And this is just one use, and I can only imagine that as I get to know this palette better and better and better and better, you're really gonna see a big variety of stuff you can do with this one palette. I just think the artistic, um, the artistic uh, exploration, like the breadth and depth of things you can do with just the one palette alone is going to be pretty astounding and I cannot wait to dig into it a little bit more. So eventually maybe I can come back with more photos and I don't know, um, God knows what. But I have to say just from a first impression standpoint, I already am in love with this palette. So if you want to know how I got this particular look, see some swatches, see how I did this, do the whole thing with a little chit chat, keep on watching. We're going to get into it right now. All right, here we are. I am ready to compare this new baby. Well, not compare, but I'm ready to try this new baby. For comparison, this was the one that I had previously, and they are the same size and thickness. Upon first impressions, I thought this might have been a little bit chunkier, a little bit bigger, but I just forget how beefy and large these guys really are. I haven't even opened it up. First of all, little geometric moment. Like, there's a little bit of foil, a little bit of holographic. All right, let's see. Oh, this is gorgeous. In real life, it looks a lot more um, variegated. So the tones are a lot brighter. Like the brights are really, really bright, if you can see, and the darks are really quite dark. And I like how it kind of goes in like this. I'm really attracted to some of these lilac -y shades. I'm even attracted to um, kind of the gold, this quad down here, this quad up top. That is part of the reason why I was really intrigued by this palette. By the way, I purchased this before my death year began, <laughs> so I couldn't like um, retroactively forego my stuff. But you know, in this palette, the, the sister palette that I have, um, it also has quite a few neutrals, these neutrals, but you know, in comparing the two, now that we're here, I actually think that the new purple one is a bit more wearable, if that's weird to say, just because it has, um, yeah, I think it actually has some more like typical shades, right? Like this one clearly has more brown. I don't know. What do you think? Which one is more wearable? I think this one looks a little bit more wearable, even though this one is. Maybe because the color scheme is more cohesive. Um, but anyway, I cannot wait to dig into this. So let's see. I'm going to start by priming my eyes with my favorite concealer. This is the Matte Camouflage Concealer. And the reason why I like this is because it leaves your skin with quite a, a nice, um, I don't want to say emollient, but it, it leaves your skin with quite a nice, slick, matted down feel that works really well for eye primer. Now, you know, this palette has been on again, off again my radar for a really long time. It's one of those things that, you know, I saw for a long while and I really enjoyed um, looking at from afar and appreciating it and just knowing that if I got it in my collection, it would be a great piece to have just because the pigmentation, the tones, everything about um, the first volume that I picked up was right up my alley and this color scheme kind of like progressed with me. And this is how I want to feel about all my purchases, you know, like I'm going into it, I know I'm going to enjoy it, I know that it's going to be something that I like, um, and I sit on it for some time. I mean, I sat on this for quite a few months, I think probably half a year before I actually decided to buy it, and now I feel like it's a good choice. I feel like um, this is what I wanted it to be, at least if it performs the way that I expect it to. But, you know, these days we watch so many reviews that nothing can really shock us anymore. Took off the film. All right, let's begin. I actually don't have any inspiration for what we're doing today, so we're going in blind. I think I'm just going to let my... Um, well, I guess we should swatch a few shades first. I'm like so excited. I'm actually really excited about the inclusion of a white. I'm thinking of maybe doing a matte white lid with a purple crease. I think that would be interesting. And then I'm wondering which purple I want to use. Do I want to use something like C3 or B3? So B3 is a lot cooler. C3 is a little bit warmer. Or we could go totally in the warm zone and do something like this one, D4. I mean, you can see that these shades are actually very different. So in the other palette, we didn't get very many different shades. Everything was kind of like the same fuchsia, and so I'm actually quite pleased. All right, this is an unprimed hand. 
Okay, that is pretty pigmented. That is pretty pigmented. I'm actually, my interest is officially peaked, guys. My interest is officially peaked. Um, and what's really interesting is they added this copper. Ooh, that copper is very buttery. So this copper, it's very, um, it's very bright. It's very metallic. And I'm also intrigued by this shade, D3. <gasps> Beautiful. E3. <gasps> Look at that. It's like metallic, metallic. C1, it's got a little bit more of like a periwinkle shift. These are all brilliant, brilliant shades. And A3 also. And that's a little bit softer, you know, compared to this one and this one. Oof. All right, I'm going to swatch on my hands. Oh, yeah. These are beautiful. You can just see from the swatches. You know, we've got some really pretty shades here. I am so, so intrigued. I almost don't even know where to begin. Um, hmm, I don't know. When I do something like this, I always want to use as many shades as possible. And then sometimes it feels like I went overboard. You know, it always feels like you're doing the most. I'm going to take A4, which is just a taupe shade. It's just like a dusty taupe. And I'm just going to run it as a transition shade. Next, I'm going to take a tiny brush. and I'm going to go into C3, which is a true purple. And I'm just going to do the same thing, but with a smaller brush. Tucking it right under my crease. And then I'm going to blend it out with a larger brush because this is, uh, this is not going to work. I'm blending out with a little bit of B12 just to try to save this. Honestly, this is on me because I don't have any makeup brushes that are clean right now. So whatever hot mess you were seeing is all on me. It's not on this product. The product is beautifully pigmented. And honestly, I think doing a really good job, but it's patchy because I don't have the right brushes. We're just going to keep going until we can get it exactly how we like. And that C3 color is building so beautifully right in the crease. It's getting really nice and deep. And it's retaining that really bright blue base pigment, which I love. It's like the more that you layer it, the more true to tone it gets. I mean, obviously that's how eyeshadow works, but sometimes you don't get that. I probably shouldn't have picked a new shape and a new palette to work with at the same time, but I just got so excited and beyond myself, I could not help it. Um, so we're going to have to tolerate the uh, the very, very uncoordinated attempt at doing kind of like a 60s double cut crease. I'm going to take a really big fluffy brush and let's go into, yeah, let's go into A4 again just to like smoke out the edges. And then I'm going to take a uh, large blender brush and I'm going to just hit under the brow bone to make sure that we're nice and buffed out. And that is a really pigmented white. Now I've mentioned that I've really been into a really white brow bone recently. And um, here she is coming back to play. And I can't wait to do a really kind of like cut creased inner eye. So I think what I'm gonna do is take the same brush, honestly, take the same brush and work it into my eyelid, just like that. Okay, so this is the look so far. The white is already a dusty travesty, but that's okay. I'm not like mad at it. Eyeshadow is meant to be used. I'm going to go into the shade, I don't know, let me swatch both of these. I'm not sure. This is one of those press glitters. Do you want to do both? Let's do both. I'm going to layer a bit of C2, which is that, mm, it's kind of like a palladium silver color. Oh, that is actually much prettier on the eyes than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit like of a sheer topper because um, in the other palette, there were similar shades in the pan, like they would look similar. And on the eyes, they were very much so like very fine toppers. They didn't really have that much pigment, but this is definitely pretty pigmented and it's not very thin feeling on the eyes. It feels pretty, uh, pretty substantial. And they only added one pressed glitter in this palette. So I'm going to take a very fine layer of it. It's a very um, multicolored, like a rainbow glitter. And I'm just going to apply a very, very thin layer over the lids, if you can see. I'm kind of living for this look. I mean, obviously I didn't do a super tidy job with it. Um, but this is just a first impression and I'm not looking to be perfect. It's fine. I mean, as far as I go for these kinds of artistic looks. I'm, I'm honestly pretty pleased. I'm pretty um, satisfied with where I am. I know it's not perfect, but I don't really mind. I think it's cute. I think it's pretty so far. Um, I'm wondering what I'd want to do on the lower lash line because I kind of want to take advantage of these really pretty plum neutral. I mean, like look at these really beautiful plum neutral tones. There's also like a really, really dark rich brown. I mean, this is just a really, this top shade is gorgeous. I don't know. Maybe little lips. I'm going to do a brown lip, I think, because I have, um, a brown liquid lipstick. I want to just swatch these because this looks so pretty. So brown, and all the browns have like a little bit of a, a plum to them. Oh, look at how deep those are. Those are so satisfying. Mm, and this is such a juicy palette. I'm so excited. Um, and I want the eyes to be really light up top. And then I guess on the bottom we'll do, 
let's do a smoky, let's do a smoky purple. Okay, let's just go into B4. And I'm not um, very good at this, but I'm trying to make sure that the lower lash line kind of matches up at least a little bit with this line. I'm trying to like bring it out this way. Maybe we can save it with eyeliner, I don't know. Let's go into B3, which is a very cool tone purple. I'm so glad I didn't pick up the, um, what is it called, the Viseart Entendu palette. I thought it was beautiful, and it is beautiful, but this palette was probably cheaper for a similar price, and you get so much more. Sorry, I forgot to mention, I bought this during Black Friday. Well, they had their Black Friday sale before Black Friday, so I got it the week before my death year, <laughs> and it was... I think it was, no joke, like $30. I think it was like half off or something. Anastasia was running an insane sale and I had mentioned in one of my previous videos, oh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up at the VIB sale. And it ended up being so much more cheaper to buy it directly from Anastasia and they had free shipping. So it was just a great experience all around. I think this is really, really beautiful. Let me throw on winged liner. So I'm just gonna use my regular pen, trying to be cognizant of the line, that's like the other tricky part about doing these um, double crease looks is you wanna make sure that the eyeliner matches the flow of the eyeshadow. And I'm not always good at lining things up. I think I do an okay job. Thank you so much, by the way, for all of the wonderful feedback you gave me for my depth year. Obviously, I have a few more videos with new things coming out. Um, and I will have more things, you know, with Christmas gifts and stuff like that, like it's just bound to happen. Um, and I also have a product that, you know, my husband gave me for my birthday that just arrived. So those videos are still going to come in. But overall, it seems like the video really resonated with a lot of people. And um, I'm just so happy that you guys were able to take something from it. It seems like this is going to be a positive experience for everyone involved. I am going to really try my darndest to make sure that I do a really good job um, representing this movement because... It seems like a lot of people were interested in trying it out. By the way, I'm taking a white eyeliner and I'm trying to do like white eyeliner on my lower lash line. It's just that white eyeliner doesn't really want to stick onto the lower lash line, you know? Okay, well, believe it or not, one of the first things I look for in a palette is whether there is a contour color in here for me. And I think the shade A4 is going to be a decent enough contour shade. So I'm going to dip in once very thoroughly and then I'm gonna try to be really light-handed about it because my um, my foundation is still a little wet. I'm just gonna try to sculpt out the edges of my nose ever so gently. Yeah, it definitely has a purple tinge. <laughs> I don't know if I love it. I'm gonna go into it for my cheeks. Sorry, if you can hear my cat rustling in the background, she's playing um, fetch with a little plastic thingy and it's really bringing her a lot of joy so I don't have the heart to stop her. <laughs> she's really making a ruckus over there. So you can see as a contour color, it's got a little bit of that like rosiness. It's got a little bit of warmth in it. So it's not entirely cool toned, but in a pinch, I feel like, yeah, you can definitely see that my nose is a bit contoured. It's a little bit snatched, nothing too serious. Let's um, highlight, I'm gonna highlight with a really blingy one. This is in the shade um, B1, important parts of the face. And I'm gonna blend out very gently with a fan brush. I don't wanna blend out too much because then it diffuses. If you don't like glitter, then don't use this shade because this shade is very, very impactful. It almost feels like an indie shadow just with how much bling there is. I think it's so pretty though. And I'm gonna use it actually as a cheek highlight because I love, like the more the blingier, you know? I love this look. I'm not subtle anyway. And you could always go into a lighter. I guess there isn't another lighter shade. Yes, that's one thing. You can go into like this pinky one, I guess. because This pinky one is kind of like a, a cheek highlight, like a blush light. And one thing to note is that first highlight that I put down is very green. It's a very like green shifting color. It's white and yellow, but actually on the skin, it does read a little bit green in real life. It kind of flips a bit chartreuse. Um, and so if you don't like that, that would be something to keep note of. I like this so far. I think it's cute. I'm gonna look for potentially a rosier. I mean, I think the only blush color I would really wanna use would be this shade. This is the shade E2 and it's like a rosewood color, but it is a bit dark. So what I'm thinking I might do is take a very light, light, light um, powder brush. I'm, I'm gonna take a really light fluffy brush and I'm gonna dip into both E2 and E1. So the topper and, you know, you can see like a two layer blush situation. And I'm gonna just try to tap it on both cheeks in such a way that the colors blend together. Mm, you've already seen that. It's quite a pigmented color. It's a pretty pigmented color. 
but it is giving me a really pretty like complimentary flush. What I'm saying is the cool of the um, eyes, the very, very cold orchid eye, mixing with this kind of berry blush, I think it's pretty. I think this is really nice. It's giving me like in from the cold vibes, you know? I'm gonna pop on my dollar store lashes. These are amazing, I love them. The brand is called Ioni, and if you can get a hold of them, I highly recommend. Like these lashes were a dollar, can you even? I think they're so pretty, they're so pretty. And I put them on in like five seconds. It's giving purple Ariana Grande moment for me. Let me throw on some mascara just so my actual lashes can mix in. I find that the lash glue that I use is really strong and um, I think because it's so fast evaporating, it can irritate my eyes a little bit. So I do get um, a little bit like watery eyed as soon as I put on my lashes, but I find that in terms of longevity, nothing lasts the way this product does. It really is fantastic. It really is fantastic. I wanna take a teeny tiny detail brush and darken up the outer lower lash line just a little bit. When I saw this eyeshadow palette, I knew I wanted to pair it with this particular Kaleidos lip color. So unfortunately today we're not going to be doing the full face, including the lips. This is in the shade Mercury Wave. And is that not just perfect? I love the formula of this lip clay. It probably is my favorite lipstick formula of all time. So it's kind of like if the Maybelline liquid inks and the NYX um, soft matte lip creams had a baby. It has the moussey texture of the NYX soft matte lip cream, but it has the longevity and the pigmentation of the Maybelline. I mean, I don't want to say pigmentation because it's buildable. It's a, it's a clearly a buildable lip. This is one layer and I use, I have like pretty decent sized lips, like they're pretty big. Um, so I use a full, like full paddle, including the, the stuff in the middle. I wait for it to be mostly dry if I want to do another layer, which I usually do. I like it pretty opaque. And they last a long time. You can wear them for probably four hours before touching up. It's not going to be as bulletproof as the liquid inks because they're not, um, they're not like liquid and dry down totally dry, right? These are a souffle cream moussey texture. And then when they dry, they are budge proof. Um, but when they wear off, they kind of lift off gently. They don't peel off and crack off. So I feel like this is probably ready for another layer. Usually I want to make sure that my lip line is softened as much as I want at this point. And then to get an ombre lip look, what I do is I don't go all the way out to the edges anymore. All right, and that is it. That is the look with the lipstick and everything. Let's zoom out and then recap. Okay, obviously it is too soon to tell if this is my perfect purple palette ever. Um, but that being said, this is my first monochromatic purple palette that is truly um, like the kind of purple that I love. The only other purple palette I have is the one from LA Girl and it's not cool purple like this. This is pretty vibrant. You've got a lot of this like brightness happening here in this column and this like general texture shape. I am absolutely in love. As you can see, a lot of this palette actually is neutral. It's probably a good half of the palette is neutral. So you've got this sextet here as well as these two, a camel and a dark brown. You've got this kind of mahogany, like this kind of quadrant is actually pretty warm. And um, you know, you've got some like pretty duochrome shades that are not actually, oh, that's really pretty. That reminds me of something in the Utopia Dream palette. I mean, this palette is teeming with duochromes, like surprise shades that you wouldn't expect to be as beautiful as they are. Um, I just, yeah, these, like, you know, these underdog shades that are not purple at all, but they are just such a supportive cast for the rest of whatever is going on in the palette, like this beautiful silver that I had on the eyes, these shades, I mean, you could use some of them on the cheeks. This color right here is phenomenal. It's like pink to peach to um, green a little bit. It's really, really stunning. Um, I bought this palette, frankly, I have high thoughts of, I had high expectations on this palette because Morgan Turner talks this palette up like nobody's business. And, um, you know, I think she's right. Granted, remember, I'm not going to be buying much makeup this year. <gasps> pretty, 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 pretty. So I'm not going to be buying much makeup this year. So you are going to hear me talk about this stuff over and over and over again. You're going to see me, um, use it frequently because, you know, depth year and all that stuff. But I have to say in terms of final palettes coming in, this one definitely was quite a banger. I'm going to set my face a bit because I'm quite dry after doing um, a few exfoliating treatments. I love this product, but the nozzle on mine is totally jacked up, so <laughs> she's not doing too well. I think I might just mix it into my Charlotte Tilbury because it's not doing too hot. But anyway, that is the look. This is the final look. My face is really wet. Don't mind my extremely moist face right now. Um, I guess it's really hard to ignore me when my face is so shiny, huh?
But I hope no matter what, you can understand where I was coming from, and I hope this, um, the look and the swatches and the live demo was interesting, informative, and if you have this palette, hopefully it gave you a little bit of inspiration. Obviously, I will be bringing this palette with me for a bunch of other stuff. I feel like it's going to be absolutely flawless and very, very perfect for incorporating into more artistic look. I mean, the pigmentation is really there. I mean, it's a pro pigment um, palette, so I didn't expect anything less, but I actually think that I'm going to like the purple one a little bit more than the pink one. It just seems like it's a little bit more punchy and a little bit right up my alley. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I am so grateful to have spent some time with you reviewing this palette um, and getting myself into a good mood for the depth year. I really feel like we are in for a treat. Thank you so much for watching. I love you, and I will see you again very soon. Bye, guys.